Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www patreon.com forward slash from the shadows you can receive books stickers coffee mugs and special content just for our patreon subscribers check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer well that's all i have for you right now folks and thanks for being a part of the from the shadows podcast family so with that being said let's get this episode started so Howard, did you did you get the winning ticket on that Mega Millions there that I just saw got drawn the other day? I did not. Uh, it, unfortunately, I didn't. I, you know, I usually, I hardly ever buy them close to my house here. I always buy them out of town when I'm passing through, preferably small, uh, obscure towns. And that way, if I do win, I can say it wasn't me. I'd say, yeah, that guy lives over there, <laughs> over here. It wasn't me, you know. But uh, I, you know. For some reason, and I don't know if it's my age or what, I really, last week, I really got to thinking what I would do, you know, if I won that kind of money. You know what I mean? Uh, I think, I think, don't you, I mean, as silly as it sounds, you know, you still got a plan for it. I mean, we all plan how we, you know, how we're going to get out of the house if there's a fire and you plan for, you know, other kind of things. Why not plan if you're going to win the lottery, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, that's exactly right. I don't know. Um. The problem is I bounce around so much. You know, I was watching this. Uh, what's the history? Uh, what, what's the places unknown or whatever? You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. And yeah. so I go from I, I I ride with my daughter last week to a gun show, and there's a big there's a thousand acres and a big house for sale down you know about ten miles from where I live now, and it's been on the market for a couple of years, fifteen million dollars. Ooh. Yeah, and I think he's dead. I think he lowered the price a little bit, thirteen and a half or something like that, but. The thousand the acres I like, but the seventy five hundred square foot house I can do without. But he's got four big lakes, and I mean he's got, I mean it looks like the kind of stuff. And the other day was the first day I drove by and thought, you know, if I had, if I was super rich, you know, like if I was a Bezos or whatever, I'd have probably have a hit place like that. But the problem is I bounce around so much. So I was watching the histories of the unknown or places unknown while ago, and they were in Malta doing uh at some british empire it was lord montbonton's uh maltese mansion that has fell into disrepair and see i would want to help them i would want to help so many people that i would be broke <laughs> you know what i mean i would be broke faster than that west virginia preacher to strip club you know? <laughs> the west virginia preacher yeah, don't you remember the west virginia preacher that won the power, the lottery and lost all his money ruined your life <laughs> You don't. No. You never. You never read it. Google it up. There's stories out there. This old boy. He was like a part-time contractor, part-time preacher. And he won. At the time, it was the largest lottery. Uh, 100 million, 200 million. I don't remember. It was in the millions. And yeah, it's stuff like you'd see. You know, there's news blurbs out there where he, you know he got robbed at the strip club. They had 375 thousand in cash. And of course, he's goofy. He's got a black cowboy hat, and you know, under other circumstances, he could run for office, but. <laughs> anyway, because he's always got a story to tell, and he was there. Hey, he was there witnessing to the girls. He wasn't there as a patron. He was he there, was trying, there to try, trying to save them. Trying to save them. He was trying to save them. 
he was trying to save them. So, but but you know, he's, his fortunes have changed because he keeps losing all this money because he does stuff like <laughs> take three hundred seventy five thousand dollars to the strip club or whatever in the back in of ca- Cadillac. In cash. Well, you know, cash, to fair, well, you know, to be fair, he locked the glove box, the, right? The, the right. fastest, huh? <laughs> to be fair, he locked the glove box, right? He thought it'd be safe. Well, <laughs> you know, I think when the guy walked up and put a pistol on his head, he probably unlocked it for him. But, <laughs> but you know, the fastest way to um, salvation is usually cash. You know what I mean? I ask the judge, he's <laughs> a lawyer, you know. It depends on your path to salvation, right? That's, well, I, you know. <laughs> now, now has it now is anybody out there in uh, any the, in your neck of the woods that you ever knew won the lottery? Did you ever know anybody? Uh, my brother won ten thousand dollars on a ticket. Wow! Nah, but he didn't That's even t- tell anybody. Maybe it was five thousand, five or ten. I don't remember. But you know, he's the kind of guy that buys the whole roll of the ten and twenty dollar tickets. There you go. Kind of like you my know. stepdad. My stepdad. That would be something he would do. Yeah, that, like we were, see, so the, the real we were just gamblers, talking about. We we're just yeah, talking about real gamblers that know how many, on average, how many winners there are in, in that role. How many have paid off in that? You know, because the the big role, the big ten twenty dollars tickets, gives millions of dollars, right? Oh so yeah, yeah. He can track. You can get on the lottery's website, like the Missouri Lottery, and you can see. Okay, well, they've still got ten winners out. You know, million dollar winners or whatever, and then they and then they. Uh, they track that, you know, it's, it's, uh, this is a secondary lottery story. Not the one I, there was a dude that I knew was about five or six, seven years older than me in school. And just one of those guys, you know, you know what I mean? You know how oh, yeah. you're 15, yeah. 15, 16, you just yeah. know, dude, right. And uh, I'm telling this story cause he, he, poor guy got killed on a motorcycle last year, maybe a year and a half ago. It might've been two years ago now in you know, my summer's times, but, um, he had a little old hole in the wall car lot down there in town called Versailles and, and just a prince of a human being when you talk to him. Other than in fact he was an alcoholic gambler, but but really a good dude, you know, other than his vices. Some people would, around there, all the Mennonites and Amish looked down on him probably for his vices. But he won three million dollars on a ticket. And uh, I went to his they had his estate sale, they had an, a sale where they were liquidating his farm. It was about eight hundred and ninety acres. In two, in two houses. Now you know how they do when them farms are. You know they, uh, they put a couple farms together, and you know the hired help stays in the little old shack, and the oh yeah, and yep. The, and the property owner stays in this mansion. So they cut this 900 acres. I'm gonna say 900, but it was 867 or something like that. So they had cut it up, and my brother went over there to bid on part of it. But they had weird. Um, they had weird things because the the lender, um, who ultimately had the who who ultimately held the paper on it wasn't really a lender. It was the it was the original owner of the property because he had carried the note on a bunch of it for this guy. Um, they had uh, minimums, you know, that was hard to breach. But anyway, me and my brother pull in there. This talks fancy auctioneers there, and they had an open house. And you could you could, all the equipment was gone, all the cattle was gone, everything was gone. So they had an open house. Everybody could walk through this, this, the, you know, the property, tour the property. You know, people brought their golf carts and their gators and side by sides. You know, when you're looking at 900 acres or whatever, it, you gotta, you know, you could really tell the people who were serious or, or not. You know what I mean? So you get there and people are <laughs> unloading these side by sides. You know what I'm talking about? You know, yeah, they're gonna go out and they're gonna go out and look at the land. And that's, yeah, they're not they can't, serious. They can't walk. Yeah, hey, yeah. Well, the serious people are like me. I ride with my brother in a Denali Duramax around. So the rookies <laughs> bring the side by sides. The heavy hitters drive a pickup. You know what I mean? But all that's to say is the yard looked terrible. It was all brown grass. And my brother says, well, you know, they just they just brush hogged it the other day, the first time in a couple of years. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I said, he didn't cut the grass. And this is a big old house. I mean, big, beautiful, five, 5,500 square foot house. I mean, overlooked this three, 400 acre bottom. And it just, I mean, looked as good as you could get it. And my brother said, oh, he didn't live here. He bought this place because it was set next to his, but he never lived here. He lived down at the shack. <laughs> I said, do what? He said, yeah, when we leave here. And, you know, and they had all these brochures printed out and these real estate auctioneer people are there handing, glad handing, handing real estate stuff out and this, that, and the other. And 
we drive around the property and, and there was this, I mean, shack had a crawl space on it that the coons and dogs and stuff had got. They didn't even do a good job of boarding up the crawl space. I mean, it was junk. The shingles were blown off the roof. Like addition, not even a carport, just like an addition. Hang on. Uh, uh, it was just it was just junk, but it had a new hot tub out there. My brother said, "Oh yeah, you come here about any day in the day." And he, because he lived in this little house when he won the lottery, and he just bought that all tried to buy all the land around it. And he just he <laughs> said, "You know, you'd be here, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. He'd be in his underwear playing Xbox or just like sitting in a hot tub drinking or whatever." And and uh, so the lottery didn't change him one bit. He just tried to isolate himself, and it just so happened there was a mansion in the on the property he bought. Yeah, and what happened? And, you know, he's buying cows and buying this and that, and that, you know, and my and I'd heard third hand that he had owed the bank a million dollars because he had four hundred some head of cows or five. You know how bank loans go when he's credit yeah, revolving. Yeah. You know how the poor American farmer out there can barely make it. He's got to go to commercial farm credit or whoever with his hat in hand and borrow a million or so whenever he needs it, and <clears throat> so. He owed him a, a million dollars and was able to go in there and pay him off when he won the lottery. Then he bought this farm that was next to him. And then, you know, he bought, bought, bought. And then he found himself owing a million dollars again within a year or two. And then he actually was, was killed. He was riding his Harley because that's another thing you do when you're 55 year old Xbox player. You got a Harley Davidson and <laughs> an 18 wheeler made a left-hand turn in front of him. He ran into the, into the trailer and got killed. And um, so the lottery, I don't know if the lottery changes the life for good or bad, but the lottery story I was fixing to tell you, I was doing this, uh, I was part of a national security investigation in uh, the Midwest here, and we had 24-7 surveillance up on some international students that were under the government's watch and every so often I'd have to go pee so I'd get on the radio and say hey somebody got my the north entrance or the west entrance or whatever because there was this ghetto convenience store there and I'd run in there and buy something because I felt obligated to use your restrooms for paid customers only I'd buy something right so it had one of those little lotto checkers right next to the clerk you know how you scan your own tickets thing you know what i mean that was news yeah. back then when that first happened okay mm -hmm. so i was scanning my tickets and at the same time i scanned my ticket where it just usually says it had a ticker across the top and it was the first time i'd used one of those self ticker self checkers i asked the fat girl behind the counter hey can you check my lottery ticket and she said well you got us we got a scanner right there i said what you we got a scanner right there. you can check your own so i said okay hold on i ran out and i cleaned out the console this government ride i had i just buy them and throw them in the console you know how that is and i went in there to check them and the first one i went it went beep and the ticket said 40 million dollars across it just 40 million dollars and my heart skipped a beat i was like <laughs> You were the and guy in the said, hot tub. You're the guy drawing in the hot tub. on, you know, June third or whatever it was. The next week's drawing, not a winner. <laughs> I, was like, and then I was like, I was going to walk off this operation. Forty million dollars. I was going to, I was going to, I was going to walk out right then. I was going to, I was going <clears> to <throat> leave. And and <laughs> so I'll tell you what that says about this podcast that I do, and I get made fun of by some people in my inner circle. I decided if I had won that 515 million this week, I'd still do the podcast. Oh man, that, you're that, higher that, than the that, government job I had because the government job I was gonna walk <laughs> away for 40 million, but yours I'd keep doing for 500 and keep my 515. <laughs> well, I so I got a, so I have a lottery story to tell you here, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of it's it kind of has I guess it kind of has a happy ending, so. So the little town where I live in, it's got this drive-through, real famous. It's like a very well-known drive-through in the area, and um, and I remember when the lottery first started in Ohio, and I think the most you could win was a million bucks. Didn't matter. I, I, I didn't matter. And there was um, a family 
and they were just modest people and, and um, won it, won that million dollars, okay? And I don't remember how they took it or anything like that because I was a country kid working in this town. I didn't really know the family, but I knew, knew the kids of the family that won it. And the thing that caught my eye, how I found out they won lottery, is this kid comes rolling through in a brand new Chevy Cavalier. Okay. So that, you know, was the big expense was the Chevy Cavalier. So you got to remember, this is, yeah, I remember 30, this is not in 1990, something like that. Okay. So, so that guy, so I got to, you know, I started to deliver mail in town. I got to know this family a little bit because they lived in this little house and, um, that kid, you know, he worked, you know, he was not a kid anymore, 30s, 40s or whatever. And he worked just a modest job at a print, still does at this print shop, okay, working in the back. Um, and drove that Chevy, I mean, he got every dime out of that Chevy Cavalier, okay? I mean, it almost fell apart before before he quit driving it. But I always, like, wondered, I'm like, you know, what did they do with that money? They because paid even tax on it. Well, no, well they pay, even if, yeah, but even if they, I think if they took it over 20 years, it was still like, you know, it was $400,000. So still like the way they lived, it was quite a bit of money every year. Well, I come to find out this kid or this man, I keep calling him kid because I think myself as a kid, he is one of the biggest kiss collectors in the country. And he just so, licked all that paraphernalia up or what? So, so that is what he spent a good majority of that lottery on was a kiss collection that is almost apparently second to none. Um, the one thing that he does not have that I know for, cause I see him, he comes, he comes to the post office and picks stuff up for this print shop. You know, they print stuff and it's a big mailing is, um, the, uh, kiss coffin, you know, cause Gene Simmons, that was, you know, he's Mr. Maybe Merch. He's got that. Well, there's a, there's, I guess there's quite a few kiss coffins, you know, you can get, you can just get one, but he does not have one yet. Oh, I didn't know you could just, I, well, then that, that waters it down, right? Well, yeah, you yeah. Yeah. Get I, one. I think you could just go buy one. So where does he it's, keep all this stuff? You he keeps he keeps it in that house. He keeps it in that little house. It's it's like a, the the guy who used to deliver the mail uh, at that guy's house has gone in there and he said it's like a museum in there. He said he could he could put a sign out and open a museum. It's showcases, display cases, lit up, all display. He said it's unbelievable. And he said the kiss gumball or a pinball machine. The kit, everything except for the kiss coffin, and so maybe one, maybe one day, maybe he's got plans to get that kiss coffin, and that'll be the last thing he gets. Maybe but he get won't. buried in it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, I'll be honest with you. You just, you, you actually just kind of depressed me a little bit. <laughs> that, that depressed you? No, I tell you what. The, the fact that there's more than one kiss coffin, because you know, I watched that American Pickers years ago, where they'd went to Gillies and. And one oh, of the yeah, items yeah. there was was Mickey Gillies' piano. Oh yeah. And I thought, well, you know, if I won the Powerball, I'd have to get the Mickey's Gilly Mickey Gillies piano and put it down on the ranch somewhere. But now, <laughs> what if there's now more you, than one? What if there's I, more than one? I don't know. Hey, listen. So all, all you need to all I need to know is I want to know if he played the girls all get prettier at closing time. Well, one time on that piano. When you got that five hundred million dollar <laughs> ticket, it never closes, brother. It never closes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.